Oh, Laureen, is that you? How are you? I'm pretty good. How about you? Uh, I'm pretty tired. Just finished a class earlier. What are you doing? I'm just going through Facebook, reading some news. Anything new about the globe? Uh, okay, so can you see the fuck tower? Uh, yes, I can. And who is that? Uh, okay, actually, this is one of my old time favorite actresses in the world. But, oh my god, I couldn't go to see her movie because of some uh, ridiculous reasons. Why is that? What's it about? Okay, so I the, the movie was banned in Vietnam because it contained the offending image of nine Dutch line uh, of South, yeah, in South Tennessee. I've heard about that infamous nine dash lines. Well, according to what I know, the, the so-called nine dash line in the map of China in, in South China Sea, right? Or you yeah, can South China Sea, yeah. Or you Vietnamese call it East Sea, right? Uh, yeah, it, East Sea. Yeah, it indicates the sovereignty of China over the islands in the South China Sea since maybe ancient times, and it demonstrates the long-standing claims mm -hmm. and jurisdiction practice over the waters of the South China Sea, and I can tell it obvious violate the UNCLOS. Hey, hey, mate, what a surprise. I mean, you're announcing that your homeland violates the international law, aren't you? Well, you must have known why. Well, I moved to the U.S. long, long ago, so uh, yeah, I do. I, I did. And I also heard that Vietnamese people don't like Chinese people that much because of this reason. Is that true? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, not all Vietnamese people hate Chinese people because of these reasons. But there are actually some reasons why Vietnamese people don't like Chinese people that much. So, uh, yeah, I, I got some information directed to this that I I studied in history class when I was a high school grader in Vietnam. That in 1950, China established the world's first diplomatic relations with the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, in Vietnam War, from 1954 to 1975, uh, China, China government also supported our country financially and militarily. And being a Vietnamese person, I'm so grateful for, uh, for what China government did to, to help us gain the, our independence from the U.S. Mm, interesting. Yeah, but the, the tragic event occurred in 1979 that uh, when the Chinese Communist Party established a full-scale war of aggression against Communist, Party, Communist Vietnam in 1979. Yeah, if memory serves me right. Wow, I, I, it's quite interesting that because I've heard about this a few weeks ago, can you tell mm -hmm. me more about this event around the year 1979-1980? Is it called the sino vietnamese War? Because according to what I, to what I read, uh, the, this war was a brief conflict that occurred in the early 1979 between China and Vietnam. And the reason is to respond to Vietnam's invasion and occupation of Cambodia in 1978. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sure about the authenticity of this information. Can you confirm or tell me more? Uh, okay, mate. So first, I have to confirm that Vietnam uh, never invades like 
other nations in the world. Oh, and yeah. yeah, we're proud of that. It's not true. It's not true that Vietnam invaded Cambodia in the past. I mean, the reason why we sent the soldiers is because we wanted to help save Cambodian from Pol Pot genocidal region. Yeah, I, that really shocked me. I've heard about <laughs> Pol Pot. Uh, uh, well, uh, so what is it about? Can you tell me more like China and Vietnam relations between them? Yeah, I think it's time we get back to the, the topic that we mentioned about, right? Yeah. So we're talking about China and Vietnam relations. So um, first, I got some information. I want to tell you that Vietnam and China officially normalized relations in November 1991 with the 1991 dissolution of the Soviet Union and Vietnam's 1990 exits from Cambodia. So on the past time, Vietnam China relations have maintained a stable and positive development trends in every aspect. So mm -hmm. do you have some ideas about any cooperation between Vietnam and China? Well, uh, I do, to be honest, but uh, it's quite impressive with the information you just provide me. Um, um according to what i studied and researched in terms of economy china is one of the largest trading partners and foreign invest investors of vietnam and vice versa yeah. and in terms of total investment capital china ranks third um, among the total countries and territories that investing in vietnam after and the first and the second one is uh, I remember they were Singapore and Japan. Wow. I'm not sure. Yeah. I uh, so. Yeah, and anything else you can tell me about Vietnam and China? I'm quite um, into this topic. Interesting topic. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because because I'm a Vietnamese person, so I learn like so much information and knowledge. Yeah, mm -hmm. about this term when I was a student in Vietnam. And one of the mentioned I want to share with you is that in 2008, after General Secretary uh, Nam Duc Mac's visit to China, the framework of the Comprehensive Strategic Cooperative Partnership was established between two countries based on the 16 character principle, contributing to boosting the bilateral relationship of two countries to new heights. Wow, no. I didn't know that. So now the relationship between two countries are doing pretty good. Is that true? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, OK, so one question that relates to the information I want to uh, tell you next. OK, uh, so um, uh, do you know what vehicle is the, yeah, it's quite commonly used in Vietnam recently? Recently? Yeah. I've, I've heard about the, the, the countless number of um, motorbikes in your country, but it's not, it's not recent. Well, recently maybe electric vehicles or something to do with electricity, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, so about electric uh, vehicles. I mean, uh, uh, okay. So, have you ever heard about uh, BYD in China? BYD. Well, I'm from China, but I, I haven't heard about it. Tell me about that. Ah, okay. So, uh, BYD is the largest electric vehicle manufacturer in China. Uh, so in the near future, BYD will be expanding its investments in the manufacturing and assembly of electric cars in Vietnam. Yeah, utilizing you know technologies to serve Vietnamese markets, Vietnamese people, and export to the Southeast Asian regions. 
Yeah, including Vietnam, my country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this is the first time I've heard about BYD. Mm -hmm. OK, so one question. One interesting question. Okay. Do you know what China and Vietnam have in common? Uh, I think uh, there's other things that Vietnam and China have in common. I guess so. But the Vietnamese people and Chinese people uh, use chopstick when eating. Okay, haha, ha, you are funny. <laughs> well, yes, they do. We do alongside with Korea and Japan, but uh, I'm mentioning and I meant another thing about two countries. Oh, okay, it's not about culture, okay, lifestyle. Yeah, so. it's about politics. Ah, okay, so I guess mm, the party leading our country is communist. You are almost there it is we we have uh, the same we both are socialist countries not communist yet and we have successfully explored the path that meets their national conditions so no matter what difficulties or problems they might have they share a significant common goal which is to make socialism keep up with the times and withstand the impacts from external forces that threaten their socialist political system. And this is why the two countries are comrades, neighbors, partners and friends and that are able to handle their problems peacefully and have common faith in serving the people and safeguarding re regional peace and prosperity. Okay, so uh, it's, it's, it's not like, um, like the party, the Communist Party mm. are struggling to provide their citizens with the, the best living condition, like living in the heaven, mm? right? Uh, well, I'm not quite sure what is it, what it's about and is it true you just said, but uh, according to the news and what we just witnessed around the globe i think that they are they both are doing pretty great aren't yeah they? yeah you can't say that again and um i also heard that um like two countries also expanding cooperation between the national assembly of vietnam and the national people's congress of china Mm -hmm. um, between the Vietnam, Fatherland, France, and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, and between ministries and sectors of diplomacy, defense, and public security, of course, have mm -hmm. been continuously enhanced over the years. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that leaders of party committees at the central level have also maintains regular exchanges and contacts in various flexible forms. Right? Wow. OK. It's also new to me. I didn't know that. Um, I think there is one thing I need to tell you. Do you know a cult that said we have no eternal allies and we have no perpetual enemies? Our interests are eternal and perpetual and these interests it is our duty to follow what do you think about that okay so first i agree with you i totally agree with you okay. in terms of politics okay yeah. uh, but i feel like i mean it is the metaphor for our friendship you want okay. to remind me something right yeah it is. It is true. Hey, is. hey, 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 bro. Uh, just, we're we're yeah. best friends. Yeah, yeah, what I you know. Say? I'm just joking, okay? Oh, okay. Well, what I meant was, um, what I meant was taking advantage of this tight relationship to improve our countries 
and still need to be aware of challenges in terms of national security and sovereignty. Sovereignty. Yeah. So I think we have a great talk today in break time. Uh, what time is it? Well, I need to go have some lunch and I have class this afternoon. So have oh, fun. Yeah, me too. I gotta go. Yeah. Uh, see you later. Break time's up. See you.